Hi, I'm Daisy, the storyteller. I will guide you through this movie about the historical garden at Stend by pointing out important elements in the garden throughout history as we go along. Stend is today an agricultural school close to Bergen in Norway. Throughout the years, Stend has been the home of many noble families in Bergen, and the site has a long history. The property belonged to the convent Nodesetter, which was established in the 1150s. The estate belonged to the Crone family for four generations from the late 1700s to 1861, when Hordland region bought Stend and the estate became an agricultural school. Once there was a beautiful garden at Stend, which is now gone with few traces left to be found from this once rich garden. This specific movie will concentrate on the Partier garden in front of the main house. The garden has, as you can see, gone through a lot of changes during the last centuries. Let's begin with how the site looks today. Today the garden has very few elements, mostly solitary trees and shrubs. The rest is mainly a large lawn of grass. A big parking lot was built here in the middle of the garden in the 1980s. The garden has not always been like this what was here before. Now we have gone back to the year 1951. In 1951, the garden had an avenue of Hawthorne along the main axis to the house. The area next to the path was mainly used as an orchard, where they had berry bushes, fruit trees and other useful plants. The main road was built in 1951 and separated the east part of the garden from the rest. Traces from the railway line can be seen in this picture of Sten from 1951. I think we should go back and see what the garden was like before the road was built. The landscape style had its influence on the garden in the early 1900s with grass, trees, follies and winding paths. The railway was built in 1894 and Stend had its own station close to the farm. Most of the garden in front of the house was used as a kitchen garden where they grew vegetables and domestic fruit and berries. The strong axe is perpendicular to the entrance created by the gravel path is missing. The path from the entrance through the garden towards the station is now off centre and curved. Surely this garden must have been more than a kitchen garden. Let's go back before the railway was built and see what we can find. Hordelin region bought Stend in 1861 and the estate became an agricultural school. 
An ideological change of the property management took place compared to the garden in the period before with private owners. When the region bought Stend, traces of a great formal garden and earlier garden structures could be seen. The garden was overgrown and had not been tended for a while. In this period of the garden, the railway and the road was not built yet. There is a geometrical system of ponds and canals in the garden. Here you can see large trees along the axis in the garden are still creating the impression of a former formal garden in this period. Here you can see traces of the green tunnel as now in large trees. Two or more fish ponds lay in this part of the garden. The ponds were filled with ordinary carps and crucian carps. The sloping edges of the ponds were covered with a climbing plant with yellow flowers. There is a gravel path functioning as a mid-axis to the main entrance. The garden is surrounded by a stone wall. I think we have to travel back in time again to find the garden at its grandest. The Garden of Stend was at its peak time in the late 1700s. Two main avenues led to the house, one from the fjord which was the main access to the house and one from the north, a riding path from Bergen. It was a formal garden with clear axis, rich parterres in front of the house, fish ponds, an orangery and a beautiful green tunnel which was described by Bishop Pavels as the most beautiful in Norway in 1821. The early garden was not as big as the later garden and stretched only to the inner wall. In the prospect made by Dreyer in 1816, the inner wall can be seen surrounding the garden. The painting contains a lot of details, like the parterres, the pavilion and the green tunnel. We can see that the part of the garden in front of the house was divided by a main axis. Bishop Klaus Pavels mentions an archway of trees in the garden in 1821. He calls it a green tunnel and refers to it. Is there anywhere a more beautiful green tunnel in Norway? So this must have been an important and beautiful element in the garden. The tunnel consisted of tilia and fraxinus trees. Structures placed in this area of the garden draw attention, especially two lions and two Danish hussars. These sculptures were sent from Copenhagen together with the sculpture of Minerva and four figures painted on boards, Sierras and Diana, in grey tones, a gardener and a hunter in colours. Closest to the main house was the Partier garden. These Partiers were possibly decorated with both beautiful flowers and vegetables as it was usual at the time. <laughs> in 1779 the philosopher H. Stevens wrote that Stend was the most beautiful garden in Bergen. Why did this beautiful garden have to disappear? Is this the ending of the story about the beautiful Garden of Stend?
Is this really how we want to treat our historical gardens?